Hey, everybody. Uh, it's been a hot minute since we've last seen your pretty faces. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm glad you asked. Well, tonight we are once again resuming the Goldshine Investigations D&D campaign. Uh, a homebrew 5e campaign written by the wonderful Anonymous. Uh, but who am I? You know, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Graham, or Graham Crackers, and welcome to my channel. I DM a lot, and I play a lot, and I love to have fun, and that's why I drag all my friends every week to play games with me. Because they don't have a choice. <laughs> Tonight I'm joined by the wonderful, wonderful... Du -du 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 -du. Pharaoh? <laughs> uh, unlike Graham, I will introduce the character I will be playing. <laughs> I'm Pharaoh. I will be playing Utaka, the water Ganazi cleric rogue of a uh, cleric of two gods, a uh, feisty tempest domain, and a uh, insect vermin plague god. Uh, and I will be joined by. Hey everybody, it's Kari. I'll be playing uh, Israel, the half-elven Faypack Warlock. Uh, I am one of the miscreants that Graham regularly ram uh, wrangles to perform for his amusement and my own. Uh, that's how I'm this exclusive content for you and you alone. Uh, thank him, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'll pass it on uh, to our next victim. <laughs> Victim's an inadequate word. I've been chained to this desk for two years now. Graham won't tell me where the key is. Only you can save me. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Sword. Uh, I'm going to be playing Griaz Bramblepelt, as always. Uh, and we're going to, I guess, skip over the sprite that is Avron and pass it off to our very wonderful Dungeon Master. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. <laughs> Uh, I'm Matt, your DM. I will be playing everyone else who's not these four chuckleheads. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we will be having a slightly shorter uh, stream today, but uh, all the better to keep this party trapped in the Nightmare Realm longer, uh, because uh, that gives me more time to write everything that they have going forward. Uh, and, you know, just, I get to throw more monsters at them, and really, that's the greatest joy a DM can experience in life. Um... <laughs> So, are you all ready to continue the Goldshine investigations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Jerry. All right. Um, when we last left off, the party finalized and managed to survive the gauntlet that Nightmare itself chose to throw at them in exchange for uh, the Eldritchian con uh, Universal Concepts help in dispatching the Children of Red Sight Summoner, who the party now suspects may be the uh, vanished father uh, of their uh, longtime ally, Joshua Scott, the wizard ranger uh, they met in Vermin Hollow. Uh, but the party seems unafraid of the Children of Red Sight's designated Master of Fear. Um, and uh, while Nightmare uh, has declared the deal complete and uh, their temporary alliance with the party for their goals, uh, Joshua Sr. seems not quite done with you yet, as you found yourself wandering a uh, advanced structure that you now uh, to understand to the best of your uh, experience and ability to be a space station. Um, uh, and you're not alone. After tearing apart the electronics uh, within, uh, uh, you all find yourself confronted by this massive uh, crustacean-like uh, mechanical creature. Um, as it comes out of the dust and rubble of the door it blasted open, um, you can see uh, more and more mechanical legs coming into view, some very obviously mechanically and artificially attached and not matching uh, the existing uh, chassis, others matching it perfectly as if they had intended to be there all along. All in all, uh, a twin clawed uh, creature with a total of eight uh, spider-like legs surrounding it. Um, uh, uh, as it uh, gives its 
horse mechanical uh seemingly only order as it levels its claws as Evron squeezes his way uh through the door that utaka managed to sabotage to open up halfway but not fully annihilate um and as Ivron pulls into the next chamber uh, and the creature's claws begin to uh, glow white hot, preparing another blast, I would like you all to please roll for initiative. Do you want us to, do you want me to move us to the battle map? Uh, yep, I, I got you. Okie dokie. Just so I can input them in the uh, track. There you go. Why, thank you. Um, Avron's okay. in the back, but the rest of you can move yourselves as you wish, and uh, I will move our our your enemy into the token layer so you can see it. I mean, I don't think that's really any different than what I rolled. So, hooray. Same. Well, you know, Incredible. My I rolled a 22, and I've got a 22. <laughs> bonkers and uh graham you'll be happy to know i uh have now figured out how to add my own custom things to the initiative so you don't have to oh no <laughs> oh no we're doomed i've been secretly you know cutting their hp off the top <laughs> wow, hp embezzlement you should be ashamed of yourself hp embezzlement uh you know been skimming off the top for a while now yeah 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 you know it's trickle down HP anomics. Anomics. <laughs> it's it's you take the HP with... off the scary monsters and you add it to the the weak ones. <laughs> the one hit kills. <laughs> Messes with the plane's avionics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Did you say you were revealing the thing? Uh, uh, yeah, it's towards the bottom since you guys are in the next chamber oh. and it's still in the hallway. It's at the very bottom of the battle map, towards the right. Oh, it's it's the spooter. Yeah, a little, oh yeah, because it's a spider mech. I've had to get a, I had to take some creative liberties. There's not exactly uh, custom tokens for every weird thing I design. Um, you didn't design your own spider mech token, Matt? <laughs> I had to cut some corners. Exactly. He hasn't been let out of the basement for even longer than the rest of us. So where yeah, yeah, get this that's kind of fair. Uh, yeah. I, I, Graham keeps me in cryostasis when I'm not DMing. Oh, he doesn't give you the food cubes? Lucky. <laughs> I think the evil uh, evil scientist likes me more than you. That's um, fair. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. Israel, Utaka, Geharis, Griaz. Um, uh, who wants to uh, take care of um, Ivron and who wants to take care of Melvin? I'll, I'll be Melvin because I know Melvin only had two portent dice and also Melvin only is going to use Eldritch Blast to run away. I uh, will. I'm willing to do Ivron in combat, but someone else can do his lines. <laughs> I don't think I could quite. <laughs> I don't the, think we uh, have the ability for the base tenor <laughs> or whatever. All right. Not uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we need to fear for both Utaka and Ivron in this in this session. Hey. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, let's. Okay, Melvin sorted on initiative. Uh, Farrah, you mind rolling for Ivron? I suppose um, I can. Uh, and uh, I suppose I will take care of his uh, dulcet tones for this session. That's a 16 for him. I can't add him, so someone else will have to. Oh, I got uh, it. Okay. All right. My name is Ivron, and I'm a goody two shoes. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I mean, fair. <laughs> That's a, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very solid impression. <laughs> He's gonna watch this. I <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I'm so in mad. for it. Hey, you know, I've got no excuses. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jeremy doesn't have any excuses either. Uh, so, what was Ivron's initiative? 16. 16. Oh, wow, that's exactly what I rolled in. Roll hey! Play. Nice. Uh, all right, okay, apparently, so we, we all just psychically connected to roll 20. <laughs> yeah. Watch, this is going to be the us. night that Jeremy gets the most nat 20s that he's ever rolled in a session. It's the one he's yeah, not it, 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 It's because he's not allowed access to his dice. We need, we need to put Jeremy in dice jail. 
Is, we'll just uh... call Jeremy on the phone and be like, Hey, you got a nat 20, what do you want to do? <laughs> had we used a bunch of slots and not rested? Uh, no, we had rested. Yeah, 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 you guys just took barely. a long rest before you got here. Okay, it looks like his isn't updated, so... He Whoever's should be fine. The... Okay, but whoever's the the DM on D and D Beyond, could you just go like reset it? Yeah, I got you. Do, 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 Ivron, and he also has eleven ten HP. All right, if everyone's spells are sorted and temp HP noted, uh, let's get let's get started. <gasps> All right. First, let's uh, let's uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Israel, you're up, and uh, Gria's on deck. Did right, something? Did something so... happen? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm worrying too much now. <laughs> All right. Um, so Israel's going to uh, level her rifle and uh, over her, her friends over and around at uh, the creatures, you know, generally speaking, it's joints, but uh, not really specifically trying to hit one or the other. All right. Well, yeah, just, just basically clarify if you do want to specifically aim for the joints, because I have like a homebrew mechanic yeah. for that. But yeah, if, if you're just trying to hit it in general, then yeah, go, go wild. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, all right. That is a 18. Uh, uh, 18 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, roll damage and make sure you tell me what kind of damage. All righty. So that is my rifle, which is, where is my stuff? There. Okay. 2d10 plus three. Where's my d10? Damn it. Stop. Oh! All right, that is eight plus three, 11 piercing damage, because it's the rifle. I don't know if that's piercing or bludgeoning. Uh, it'd probably be piercing, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, piercing, that okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, uh, Israel, you level your rifle uh, over. Um, uh, Moscow, uh, Joshua, and Ivron's uh, shoulders and uh, fire. Uh, you've gotten used to firing it at this point. The bullet whizzes uh, uh, between all of them through the uh, halfway open door and <laughs> ricochets uh, off of the creature's armor. You definitely hit it, but it seems like it did absolutely nothing to it. <sighs> That's the shame, but oh well. Because piercing damage isn't going to do anything. Yeah, uh, I, I will say since yeah you did hit it, you know you hit it specifically. Yes, it is immune to piercing damage. The armor's too tough to for your weapons to pierce it. Very well. Uh, since I've got a whole lot of nada after that, I'm just going to sort of back up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Griaz, you're up, Utaka on deck. As Israel um, backs up past you and you see the rifle bullet just bounce harmlessly off of the creature's armor. Yeah, Griaz is probably reaching for his shotgun when he saw that happening, going, well, shit, never mind then. Uh, he's going to cast Wind Wall, essentially, at the choke point where this thing is, so the, um, like, the 10 feet from the door. Uh, and try to kind of block this thing off. So, okay. uh, how high is the? Is it from floor to ceiling? I'm assuming. Uh, it's super yeah, high. Uh, floor to ceiling. It's about um, you'd estimate about uh, 15 feet tall. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah, I can I can absolutely do that. 15 feet high, one foot thick, uh, wall of just wind. So, uh, if the creature enters the area, it has to make a strength saving throw. Uh, it takes 3d8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful one, and it also blows away any other, like, small flying creatures or uh, lightweight materials or smoke gases, all that kind of stuff. 
and okay. any um, projectiles are uh, deflected upwards and automatically miss. Interesting. Okay, noted. Um, uh, here, uh, I'll go ahead and draw a little cube to indicate where the area is. So uh, how wide is it? It is one foot thick, um, and it basically can go up to 50 feet. So it's it's going to just... So you're just going to, just... yeah, clog up the whole hall. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, feet high, yeah. About here? Uh, oh, wait, that's on the uh, DM info layer. Just a second. <laughs> Oopsie poopsie. Um, there you go. Um, about there? That works. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, then. Uh, is that the end of your turn? It is. All right. So you conjure this uh, wall of wind, uh, all of the smoke and dust that the creature's uh, previous attack on, uh, to get into the hallway had created gets whoosh, blown away um, as it creates this, like, dull droning sound of the wind just funneling in this, like, densely packed metallic tube that you're in. But... Um, uh, uh, the creature's like uh, clawed footsteps kind of stop as it kind of considers the obstacle. Um, Utaka, you're up uh, with Ibaran on deck, so basically you're going to go twice. <laughs> uh, so Utaka will kind of slip around Moscow and t over here to the side uh, of Ibaran towards the choke point. Now, does this wind wall... Uh, can he step through it? Does it seem like impassable? How does this work? Because he's never it interacted is, with this before. Yeah, it is like tornado type wind that is all contained within a wall type structure. So Utaka could probably try to walk through it. Um, succeeding on a strength saving throw, they could make it through. They would take damage just from the intense power of the wind. Hmm. Because he's thinking Shatter might be a bad idea in a hallway like this. Made of <laughs> inorganic material. You mean well, opening yeah, the we side of a, a spaceship? From, like, space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> <This hallway. laughs> Not that he like really knows what's out there, but he also doesn't want to be out there. Let's exactly. so. in this campaign the fun way. Let's all just get sucked <laughs> in the vacuum of space and nightmare realm. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, kind of low on options, actually. Um, yeah, heck it. He will, okay, so if he steps into the wind wall, does he take damage immediately? Is that what happens? Yeah, um, so if you step into the wind wall, um, strength saving throw, and then, uh, 3d8 or halved. Strength saving throw, his best stat. He's got this. But if you got any range spells, I mean, that's... I'll... What what range spells do you think I have? It's shatter. I no, I, I was just trying to <laughs> trying to choke this thing off. We could try to run. Where? Elsewhere. Okay. Oh. Uh, so my strength saving throw the is door. a whopping 14 plus zero. So that what does that do hate. me? Uh, 14 is, is meter beat, so it was it was a DC 14. So let me roll damage. Utaka at his uh, absolute strongest. <laughs> I want you to know, Farrah, you're making me roll damage against you. This was not my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just want to spread the love, really. Uh-huh. Oh, god damn it. Okay, that's 11. Uh, 14, so you take 7 points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah, okay. Uh, he doesn't look that phased, honestly. All right. Uh, but... Talking, you just power through the massive uh, hurricane winds that Griaz had summoned to get closer to the massive mechanical monster. Now, I can thunder wave it. That's what matters. <laughs> uh, so I will cast thunder wave at second level and it needs to make a constitution saving throw all right and uh is that like a range spell that you're casting on it or is it one of those originates from yourself things it originates from yourself it's a cube that originates from yourself uh so is that going to hit ivron also no because i'm facing it towards the thing and everyone's behind it, me right now it's a cube that goes around you it ex expands for that's you the center no of the cube no if you not, uh that's always how i've read it that's how I thought it was at first, uh, but looking at uh, the uh, 
what is that? The, the, the dude who does all the rulings? Uh, it is a cube that originates from you directionally. Huh, okay. Alright. It is a 15-foot right. cube in front of you with yourself centered. Alright, fair enough. Uh, constitution save, that's... Um, uh, DC 15. Yep, uh, it fails. Okay, then it takes uh, 12 thunder damage. Right. And is pushed ten feet back. All right. If it's if it fails. Okay. Um. You cast your spell as you fight your way through the hurricane winds. Uh. Uh. And it kind of stumbles backwards. Its mechanical legs uh, digging and clawing into the um into the metal of the ship. Um. Uh. It seems like it actually manages to hold its footing, but uh, you can see uh, some very light damage and scuff to the armor, whereas the rifle had left no visible mark on it. So you definitely heard it this time, but it's uh, still kicking as it kind of looks at you, and you can see the heat in its claws kind of die down as the pincers uh, click uh, as the heat dies down. Uh, is that the even your turn, Utaka? Uh, I will use my last five movement speed to get behind the wall wind wall again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, let's see, um, then Ivron <clears throat> probably says something like, take heart to my friends, and he will cast Bless. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, on, I don't see Geharis on the map, but I assume he is here. Yeah, he's, he's astride the Nightmare, so where, wherever okay. the Nightmare is. So he will Bless... Geharis, Melvin, and himself. All right. Let's let's do that. Okay. Uh, and he will ready his great sword. Okay. I don't know if he has any other actions this turn. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Geharis, you're up with Melvin on deck. So once again, you will essentially go twice. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I am going to use a bonus action to. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste the spell slots. Uh, I am going to use my innate ability to cast darkness, centered around the being past the wall. Okay. Uh, do you saw the little cloud effect you used before, or should I grab uh, it from the other? Yeah, I can, I can grab it. Okay. Um, and I think that's all I'm gonna do. Um, uh, I will move. I, I will move. That's the last thing I'll do. Um, I just need... Gosh, there's so many tabs. <laughs> I know the feel. I have like a bunch of documents pulled up. Um, uh, animated spells. There we go. Uh, darkness. All right. I actually uh, think it's, is it 30 feet? What is it? Uh, 15 feet. So it's actually... A... Yep. So, uh, yep, that's right. You're Perfect. Good. Um, all right. So, uh, uh, taking a, uh, um, uh, a leaf from Griaz's book, you aim to impair the creature um, as you cast your darkness uh, into the hallway. And as the, uh, from all of you guys' perspective, the hallway... Uh, uh, that's being blocked by these hurricane winds as the spider-like mech uh, strides closer, goes completely pitch black, and all you can hear from inside is in that same hoarse mechanical voice, MY VISION IS IMPAIRED! Alright, and then on top of Naden, I am going to move 20 feet back. Alright. Um... Okay, so that's it for uh, you then, yeah? Yep, that's that's all I'm going to do this turn. And Melvin is going to move right next to Israel and roll a perception check. Um, I think Melvin would be looking for a way to get out of here. Okay. And let me just pull up what Melvin's dice were. Two, 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 an eight and a ten. So Melvin is just going to roll. Yeah, that, that that's fair. 
Uh, okay, what is Melvin's uh, good old, good old perception? Melvin, yeah, so Melvin, like, runs away. He's looking for a way out of here, and he rolls a 10 plus 0. He rolls a 10. All right. Uh, as Melvin uh, approaches you, Israel, and has his spellbook at the ready, he looks around, seeing no visible target, so focusing on finding an escape route. Um, uh, from Melvin's perspective, it looks like there are two possible exits. Uh uh, sets of uh, sliding mechanical doors like the ones you guys have been encountering, uh, one uh, to the right of the room and one uh, continuing forward the way you had been going, which you are currently heading towards, Garrus. Um, the doors don't seem distinct from each other, um, uh, so it's more a matter of personal preference, as far as you can tell. Okay. Um, is that the end of Melvin's turn? Melvin will move an additional... Melvin will move an additional five feet away. All right. In that case, uh, Israel, you will be on deck, but it is time for the creature's turn. Um, so it's a strength saving throw on entering the wind wall, correct? Is correct. Um, all right. Um, it's going to move. Uh, it's going to move forward. Does it know which way is forward? No, well, it was facing forward, so I can just continue the way it was going. That's fair. <laughs> Here, I, I need to move your cloud of darkness real quick just so I can grab it. I can't grab it while it's in the way. No, let me just move um, it. I'll move it. <laughs> all right. It's going to move into the wind wall and make a strength save. Uh, I already have your DC. It fails. Um, so uh, so what happens on a failure, Griez? Uh, so it's going to take, what is that, 16 points of bludgeoning damage. And, uh, okay. Okay. Strong wind keeps smoke gases at bay. Smaller, smaller creatures can't move. I'm pretty sure it can still pass through. It just takes the damage as it passes through. Okay. Um, noted. Yeah, it's not impassable. It's just a. It, it just, just dam damage. damages it and like slows yeah. it down. All right. Yeah. Um, however, uh, it is still within the darkness uh, um, and has used up all of its movement. Uh, so it's very slow. Um, so I don't think there's much it can do. It can't see any of you. Yep. Uh, can, and we can't see it. Can we? Yeah, it's still in the cloud of darkness. Uh, um, uh, it would need to move on its next turn to, to do so. Um, all right. And I see so that it? Brings... Um, can I you see can... through magical darkness? I think so. I have devil's sight. Sight yes. Okay. Yeah. With devil sight, you can. Uh, you can see it's fighting its way through the wind wall, uh, uh, and like pieces of the armor kind of getting ripped off by the hurricane winds. Um, uh, it's about to reach the end of the darkness and pass through the wind wall, but its steps are incredibly slow but powerful sounding, uh, and you can see it, um, but none of the rest of you can. Um, Critical. <laughs> <laughs> noted. Um, and speaking of, Geharis, Israel, and Melvin, uh, as you're all in the same kind of general vicinity uh, and like figuring out your next room, Melvin plotting an escape route, Geharis like getting a bit further away and deciding what to do next, and Israel watching as the spider mech crawls closer, you hear a voice. <laughs> this light, gir girlish voice, and... Uh, Israel, you look to the side and see uh, on one of the distant walls, an eye opens as if part of the wall itself, this bright green eye with this like distorted and almost star-like blood red pupil. Um, um, and uh, Geharis looking up at the ceiling, you see several more like it opening up. Uh, the walls and ceilings quickly being overtaken by these uh, green eyes. Um, and as the ceiling uh, distorts to form a wide, uh, childish smile composed of needle-like concentrical teeth. And the walls suddenly distort and almost begin to melt uh, as this massive titanic uh, mass of what looked like these black 
worm-like creatures all forming together, almost like akin to the mimics you had seen in Salemo, sloughing off the walls and forming together um, in the center of the chamber um, uh, between uh, all of you in the center of the chamber as this massive, almost... It seems humanoid, but it's very rough. Like, it's not quite sure what a human is supposed to look like. But you can see a very unnaturally wide smile, as you had seen on the ceiling. And this uh, head of messy, distorted white hair. Uh, this almost, if it, if it wasn't so massive and distorted, this relatively decent mimicry of a child, but taken onto a massive scale, composed of these black camouflaging creatures. Um, as it smiles down at you, Geharis, and you hear its uh, voice ring out again. <laughs> um, that sounds the... wonderful. <laughs> also, crit from Warrior for everybody. Ooh. Sorry, Squad sorry, crit. not everybody, just. <laughs> the squad. Yeah, I, I don't get a crit. That's fair. Um, the Devourer Leviathan is going to attempt to engulf you, Garrus. Oh, I, 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 I would be surprised, that... but this would be like the fourth time I've been eaten in this campaign. It knows <laughs> that at the, this thing's appearance, there was a bit of smoke from Israel's mouth because that that was horrifying. That entire experience, like, <laughs> you realize, wait a second, none of this is real. <laughs> like I can shell out, but yeah, there was a moment where she was like, "That is, I never Ram. want to see that again." <laughs> yes, Ram, Melvin can use a portent dice so it doesn't devour you. Uh, it rolls an eight. Uh, okay, let me uh <laughs> from, <laughs> from from Melvin. Um, well, engulf isn't an attack roll. Oh, it's, a, oh. it, it's you have to make a saving throw. However, I, I won't force you to consume it. Um, uh, so, Geharis, make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh. Okay. Well, I have a plus six to this. I might be okay. Uh, that is a thirteen plus six, nineteen. Okay. Um, uh, so you succeed the save. Uh, da -da -da, successful save. Um, all right. So, uh, if you choose. Uh, you can, instead of being engulfed, be simply pushed back by it. Um, five feet in any direction. Sure. Uh, does Naden also have to make a save? Yes. Okay. Let me make Naden save. Well, Naden got a seven. Noted. <laughs> so, um, I guess it engulfs Naden and I'll take the push back? All right, so, like, I fair. get knocked off Naden? Yeah, I, I'll flavor it. I just wanted to see, like, who's who's taking what. Um, okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um... All right. Oh, uh, remember, Graham, you have Bless. Oh, heck. For, for Geharis' rolls. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think I saved. Yeah, yeah, you know, he saved. He's fine. Um, okay. Um, uh, Naden is engulfed and takes 12 acid damage. As Geharis, you watch as this, like, massive, like, half-melted and distorted figure... Uh, reaches out to grab you uh, and starts to, uh, these like worm like masses start to engulf you and Naden both. But as it pulls Naden, uh, the force of it like pulling Naden into itself actually pushes you off of it. But you can hear that tea kettle whinny as Naden's skin begins to burn. As you can see, the worms like falling off of the creature's skin start to bite and like uh, dig into Naden's skin with these like horrifying leech like cocentrical teeth. Um, uh um do 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 um that is the end of their turn uh so ba -ba -ba -ba. um israel uh you're up griaz on deck uh as the devourer leviathan has entered the field yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh take uh, my crit for one of my Eldritch Blasts at the creature, the, the horrible leech creature that's now engulfing my boy Naden. It nearly engulfed my other boy. Yep. Is it a right. leecher? Oh, nice! And I got another nat 20. So hey! 20s. <laughs> and so we're just gonna, we're gonna roll that dice to so double it. Um, so that was... Yeah. And as usual, give yeah. damage type in case it's relevant. Yeah, so that is... 
God damn it. Let me see things. Yeah. Let me see things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll... Okay. Uh, that is 16 plus 5 is 21 force damage with okay. one blast. Oh, and uh, I will say as a side note, I'm not going to take the crit away from you because you're holding at 20, that's mm -hmm. fair. But for future reference, remember Eldritch Blast is a ranged attack. You're in melee range with it, so technically your Eldritch Blast have disadvantage right now because uh, you're still in melee range with it. Um, uh, but you can keep the crit, just saying for the roll, roll disadvantage when you're in melee for Eldritch Blast because it's I'm 10 feet away. That's, that's more. That's uh, not melee uh, range. Melee's five. I think functionally it's a large. No, yeah, 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 no, yeah, because uh, look, so part of the blob is in the five foot range of you. Oh, dumb. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> dumb. <laughs> I think you keep a crit. One shot already. <laughs> um, no disadvantage to close range. <laughs> Everybody took the crossbow feature. <laughs> it wasn't a crossbow feature in 3.5. I could take it with anything. Anyway, crossbow um, feet's a good feat, though. It is. It's such a good feat. It's, it's really that. good. Heavy, my heavy favorite crossbow, um, you got that multi so 21 with one blast, and it'll be, uh, yep, 20. I got that. Is that right? Can I count? 15 with the other rest. Yep. Uh, is that 15 to hit? No, they uh, were both crits to hit, so this okay. is damage. So it's 21 force damage with one, 15 with the other. Nice, That's all right. Total of 36. Okay, owie. Um, that's force damage, correct? Um, yeah. uh, okay. Um, all right, noted. Um, is that the end of your turn, Israel? Um, I am going to move over. Hmm. <laughs> like to move there. All right. Um, the creature will get an attack of opportunity on you, so. Uh, uh, Israel AC? 15. Um, all right, that is a hit. Oof. Um, okay. Um, uh, Israel, as you fire these el uh, arcane shots into it, um, uh, able to land solid shots despite its like constant moving and wriggling around, uh, you start to back up uh, with your uh, rifle in hand, um, but you see the creature's head suddenly <laughs> swivel around with its still wide smile to look at you, and from out of the, uh, of the mass of worms, you see this long barbed limb lash out and <laughs> jab you uh, in the gut. Um, you take 18 uh, piercing damage and make me a constitution saving throw. Uh, you're muted if you're uh, um, sp Sparokin. Alright, uh, uh, that is a 16 con save. Okay. Um, duh, 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 duh. Um, okay. Um, as the stinger uh, lashes into you, you see a part of the worm-like mass like funneling down the tube-like tentacle, and you immediately panic and like yank it out of yourself, and you feel yourself kind of dizzy and dazed. Uh, but uh, um, you watch as several of the worms simply slough off the end of the of uh, the barb limb without uh, contacting you. Yeah, that um, absolutely. There, there's a little more smoke with that. Like that's that is horrifying. I don't want anything inside of me. It's, it's gross. Uh, you you are a bit dazed by the creature's poison. You will have disadvantage on your next attack roll, but beyond that, suffer no ill effects, as far as you know. Um, uh, um, all right. Uh, with that, as you back away, um, Griaz, you're up. Uh, Utaka on deck. So I'm going to maintain concentration on the wind wall, at least until that thing is, is all the way through. Um, in the last session, Junior was a like 
became a mimic. Yeah, he, he, he's taking the form of a storage crate right now. Right. So I'm assuming that one of the storage crates just to the like left of the doorway is Junior. I'll assume it's it's the one close. <laughs> is that fair? Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, so I will have Junior's essentially lying in wait for this thing to, to come through. He has 10 feet movement. He is kind of, he is readied in action to just spring on okay. this uh, spider robot right. thing. Uh, um, Garris, just so, since it, he might move uh, soon, just plot me a mimic on one of those storage crates near the bottom. I would. Uh, near the bottom? The yeah, uh, okay. let's say the one on the right, since it's closest to the door. Sure. Right? Yeah, the one so right next to Otaka. Junior will ready you. a bite for when that spider mech makes it through the door. Um, uh, and what would you like to do? And then um, seeing this mass thing ac accumulate, uh, Grias is going to draw a shotgun and make a shotgun attack. All right. Uh, make me an attack roll. I am going to go ahead and use a crit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, I got a few of them. I might as well. Indeed you uh, do. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you give said me the damage in its type. 3d8? Is that uh, what you agreed on? Uh, yeah, I believe it should be. I'll double check to be sure, but um, I believe that's correct. So go ahead and roll yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's 2d8 in D&D &D Beyond, but I think we, we said before it was 3d8 the He's only used it once before, so if you want to nerf that a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. here I have stats for the double barrel. Da, 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 da. Um, I did, if I can find it. Um, had a whole thing set aside, and now I cannot find it for the life of me. Um, uh, there you are. Um... Uh, yes, 3d8. Okay. Uh, oh. So that all in all is, I think, 37. All right. Um, yeah. And damage type? I believe it's, it would have to be bludgeoning. Yeah. Okay. Um, or it says piercing. Yeah, piercing. Obviously. Yeah, they're bullets. We, we said that before. Yeah, piercing damage. All right. Um, Gray, as you pull uh, uh, your shotgun back, maintaining your concentration on the wind wall and fire, this deafening from your boomstick uh, as pellets rake uh, uh, up the side of the creature. But you see that it's just sheer mass kind of absorbs a good chunk of the blow and its head suddenly freezes and the smile drops. And its head slowly cranes towards you as worms slough off of its neck. Um, its eyes, uh, the red, red blood-like distorted star-like pupils narrow. Well, bring it on, come on. I got scarier things than you as a pet. Um, uh, the creature's head kind of cracks and swivels, uh, as you can see that barbed, uh, tentacle waving in front of it as it seems angry. Um, uh, Utaka, before you go, um, assuming that's the end of your turn, Grias. It is, yes. Um... I guess the only other thing, uh, bonus action reload. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, you uh, start pumping uh, shells uh, into the uh, into the breech of your gun and pull it back. And Israel, as you're like keeping your eye on the mass and like keeping your rifle at the ready, you suddenly <laughs> feel this gashing pain uh, across your side uh, and feel the warmth of your own blood. You take 12 slashing damage from an unseen source, but from the looks of the wounds on your stomach, it's claw marks. Fantastic. Now we've got a predator in here or some shit. It's great. <laughs> this is why I didn't say anything whenever you made that crack about this being all based on iconic aliens. This <laughs> too. <laughs> God, God damn, yup, ja. <laughs> Wait, when, when do the people from Avatar show up? Uh, I said oh, iconic Navi. aliens, Graham. Oh, sorry, not best-selling movies of all yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Oh man, uh, I, I could so say a lot Israel... right now, but I don't. I I I, 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 I want to be able to use Twitter. So, <laughs> uh, is ET um, coming in then, Matt? Oh my for, gosh! For the most terrifying knowledge, of aliens. Uh, we're gonna open Israel the final door. Bloodied. Yeah, we're gonna open the final door. ET, oh, no. send home. E ET's gonna heal us all. Yeah, he's just gonna wow. send us to home, back so, out of the realm. Were we all able to to hear uh, this horrible baby creature? 
yes, uh, okay. you can al you can always hear the the creature speaking, and yeah, you all see Israel uh, sporting uh, uh, new wounds from an unseen source. Um, Otaka, now it is your turn proper with Ibron on deck. What would you like to do? Okay, well, as he has no idea where the spider mech thing is, and he doesn't necessarily want to be there when it emerges, so he will shift back out here into the room, uh, narrowly dodging Junior, though he doesn't know it. <laughs> and uh, he'll kind of, like, turn and kind of furrow his brow and and uh, look disgusted at that big thing behind him and be like, no one wants to be your friend <laughs> at it. And he will, uh, I guess, uh, use command and tell it to grovel. Okay. Um, so and it would fall prone. That's a uh, wisdom 15. Yeah, wisdom save. Uh, which it miserably fails. Um, uh the uh, massive creature's uh, frown grows deeper, uh, and its eyes kind of like n squint, almost like it would cry. But like it, uh, if it can cry, you, it doesn't seem like in this form it's capable, uh, and falls into like almost like a half-human puddle of worm-like masses on the ground. Although it's just through its sheer size, its grip on uh, Naden remains. Um, but it is now prone. Um, uh, and I don't know. I don't know that I have many bonus actions to use right now. Uh, nope, that's it. He he will draw his silvered rapier. Uh, okay. but otherwise, he will pass his turn, making it Ivron's. Uh, Ivron studies himself for the coming fight with this mech and will take five steps towards the uh the uh, wind wall and will hold his great sword and ready attack for when he can see the creature okay um all right uh as Ivron readies his blade for the massive creature's entrance, um, you can see Yao also taking a crouch position uh, and letting out a low, like, uh, gurgling growl. As um, I will say, so that uh, they're also involved, um, Moscow uh, is going to make a run for this door, and uh, Joshua is going to run to try and uh give naden some uh backup in escaping uh so Gaharis, if you want to roll for naden to escape uh joshua will provide uh naden with advantage sure uh, um and that uh, is strength for athletics correct uh or yep uh or um da -da -da -da, let me double check uh, grapple yeah, is athletics uh, it, or acrobatics it, it'll be its action to do this but yes it is a strength check uh and i have the dc on hand so okay that is a plus four to a 13 for a 17 to escape all right. Uh, uh, with Joshua's assistance, Naden does escape. It can exit the Devourer Leviathan's mass uh, at any point within five feet of it. Oh, okay. Um, but that did consume Naden's action to do that, so bear that in mind when your turn comes around. Sure. Um, uh, and, and my turn comes right up after Ivron's. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if Ivron doesn't do anything further, then he just readies an attack. Yeah, but um, can you move him five feet lower? Uh, all right. On the map. Uh, um, bear in mind, uh, five feet, uh, closer, he won't be able to, cause it'll still be in the dark. Uh, well, yeah, it would, yeah, it would come out next to him. So, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, so yeah, okay. He'll, uh, move five feet forward and ready his, uh, his attack as you draw your silver drop air and Gaharis, you can see Joshua getting, uh, d uh, chancing the, uh, barbs, uh, of the creature while it's distracted by Utaka's, uh, uh, magic and insults and, uh, Griaz shooting at it, uh, manages to pull, uh, Nate in free with a heave as you see Moscow making a run to try and, uh, like reach up and slap the, uh, keypad that would open the uh, next door. Um, uh, Gaharis, what would you like to do? I'm going to move 30 feet. I have highlighted my maneuver. I won't prompt attacks of opportunity. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to move myself right five feet down from Melvin and within five feet of Joshua. Okay. Um, and I believe I'm 15 feet past Israel, and I'm going to make two melee attacks against the worm creature, both at an advantage because it's prone. All right, go for it. Uh, that is a 18 to hit and a 
15 to hit. And you have bless. And I bless. So, you know what? That's 1d4, right? To each? Mm -hmm. So that 15 is now an 18, and that... Both hit. Okay. Wonderful. Um, now I get to roll a lot of d8s that I didn't collect ahead of time. However, uh, you're using a sword, so I'm assuming some of this is going to be slashing, correct? Uh, yep. Uh, okay. But more of it's going to be necrotic, and oh no, just, just <laughs> and more of it's going to be radiant. Oh yeah, just, I know. Just, I'm going to get some worms. Uh, yeah, just let me know how much of that is slashing damage okay. before you start rolling the necrotic. Okay, seven plus five and six plus five. That's I think it's plus five. Let me double check. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, so that's twelve and eleven. That is twenty-three slashing damage. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, noted. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't like that hum. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice that you don't like it. <laughs> it was at this point I did realize that I done goofed up. Uh, Geharis, as you slice into it, uh, with your blade, uh, almost instinctively its head splits you can see that the the mockery of a human form is actually just comprised of more of these worms camouflaging and mimicking and they form around your blade and the whole creature bisects itself into two smaller versions of itself um one of which does take the full breadth of your strike but the other seems uh uh pretty much unharmed okay so at least is that by that both strike. strikes that it took or because uh, that was the well, combined so slashing uh, the uh, well, so yeah, it just when it takes slashing damage, it can do this. So, because I do have two attacks, so would it be three of them at that yeah, point? It does it split twice, or is it just two of them? Uh, I'll say since we already know you're gonna hit, uh, that was the combined slashing. Yeah. It can only split once because okay. uh, it's a reaction. So, uh, so yeah, w the one you were attacking took the uh, brunt would, of it. Does it have um, a reaction as it took its reaction to hit Israel? Uh, it took a reaction to hit Israel, but then its turn came up afterwards because oh, it, right. it, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, All right. Um, uh, well, it needs to make me a Constitution saving throw, which it will. Uh, it succeeds. Okay, so it takes 2d8 necrotic damage for a total of 5 necrotic damage. Um, okay. And then I'm pumping in two first level spell slots of radiant damage. Okay. Um. 8 and 6, so 14 radiant damage. Okay. The, uh, one you had been initially striking, uh, um... As you hack into it, pump magic into it, and the necrotic energy flows through it, uh, it gives a wail of childish pain as the worms begin to slough and dissolve off of it. And basically, this uh, mimic of a human form melts around your blade, and the worms begin to like scatter and die off, forming this just kind of carpet of like gross, blackened, and uh, potted green flesh. However, the one that split off does still stand. Okay. Bonus action, I'm going to use Shield of Faith for another first level spell slot, and I now have a plus two to my AC for ten minutes, putting my AC at twenty. Okay. Um, is that the end of your turn? That will be it. Okay. Uh, it is now Melvin's turn, and then Israel, you'll go after the does... aliens oh, too. Sorry. Does the movement for Naden? Do they still have their movement? Because they use their they still have their movement. Out? They just they, they just can't take an action. Okay. But, uh, uh, but they Naden, still have their movement. Naden's going to move because I know this thing already used its reaction. So we, Naden's just going to yep. go all the way to the far side of the room. <laughs> um, and as Naden passes it by. Garris, you watch as the, uh, the creature that split off from the original kind of stares down at the corpse of, uh, of its sort of mother, sort of clone, uh, and just looks at you with a very plaintive. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, Melvin is now up, uh, for real. Oh, well, um, I would uh, like... Muted. Oh, well, I, I would like to cast a spell, um, as Melvin... Oh, a wizard casting a spell. <laughs> yes, um, it's truly a delight and truly magnificent. Um, took me many years, many years. Um, I would like to cast Tasha's hideous laughter on this creature. All right. Um, 
That's a charisma save, I believe, yes? Uh, it's a DC 15 something save. Uh, wisdom. wisdom. Uh, it fails. Well, n now it's going to stay prone. <laughs> and... Yeah, uh, so the target must succeed the wisdom saving throw, falls prone, and becomes incapacitated, unable to stand up for the duration. The duration is up to one minute that I hold. All uh, right. Oh, does this have an intelligence of four or higher? Uh, yes. Okay. So it is affected, and in, at the end of each of its turns, and each time it takes damage, it can make another wisdom saving throw. Yeah. All right. Um, it has an advantage if the saving throw is triggered by damage. Okay, got and, it. Uh, I'm just going to say to... right now, if this thing starts laughing, smoke is going to pour out of your ass. That is goddamn hor... Th don't... No. <laughs> yeah, which, sure enough, uh, uh, Gareth, any particular flavor for uh, for Melvin's hideous laughter? Uh, I don't find any of this very funny. And then he runs. <laughs> yeah, and the creature kind of watches him run uh, and just... <laughs> this high-pitched girlish laughter distorted by the mass of worms um as gray as um <laughs> um is that the end of melvin's turn all right uh the spider mech is going to have to move the cube of darkness a bit again. Um, or, oh, nope. Uh, yeah, it looks like you moved it. Thank you. Yep, um, moved on to the map layer. Uh, steps out, uh, with, uh, not even seeming to immediately notice Avron uh, as it steps out and uh, it waves its claws. Annihilate! Uh, as Avron goes. Not on goes... my watch. <laughs> that was good. That was good, Avron. Okay. All right, Avron can make his attacks. Uh... He will use his crit from chat. <laughs> um, and also, Matt, if it began its turn in the wind wall, it needs to make a strength save. Oh, so, uh, thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Uh, which it fails miserably. Okay, it's going to take 20 bludgeoning then. Oof, brutal. All right. I'm um, going to start rolling d8s. <laughs> D8 time! It's that sweet smite time. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, and so, yeah, it's a crit, but make sure you give me the damage types in case it's relevant. We're, get, we're getting to that level of the game where damage types actually matter. Okay, so that will be... Um, 14 slashing from the great sword. <laughs> okay. And then <laughs> divine smite at whatever level, level 2, right? So it's 368. Okay. Oh. That is uh thirty three divine. Radiant. All right. Okay. Radiant. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Alright, so uh Griaz, you turn to see the spider mech slowly stepping out of the wind wall, its armor still being ripped apart by the hurricane like winds. Uh and yeah, as it gives its a uh, battle cry and Ivron uh denies it and goes in for a swing, Ivron's sword actually bounces off of the armor, but as he channels a divine smite into it, he manages to cleave through. It does not take any slashing damage either, but it does take the the radiant. As Ivron's with the boost of radiance, his sword does manage to cleave through, uh, creating this nasty-looking gash across its armor, and you can actually see it like struggling to not completely fall apart. Uh, as it looks around, it looks bad on its last metaphorical legs. As it looks to Ivron and like clicks its claws, uh, nah, I, uh. Right, and goes to lunge at him with its claw. Um, so it's still up. Uh, yeah, but barely. Then Junior's um, going to take his ready to action too. Uh, oh, indeed you can. Uh, um, thank you for reminding me. All right, Junior's going to uh, going to crate hop uh, uh, over to the creature uh, and make an attack roll. Yeah, he's basically just going to lunge at him. That's uh, twenty six to hit. It's a hit. Roll for uh, roll for damage. Make sure you give me the type. Yeah, um, so it's going to be 1d8 plus 3 piercing. I'm assuming that's not going to do anything. Uh, yeah, it does not. It's it's immune to piercing and slashing, you know, now. Okay. It does 1d8 acid damage as well, so I'll just roll that. Yep. Um, which is just going to be 6 points of acid damage. Okay. Uh, um, 
do 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 do. Um, Junior's just gumming on him, but like the saliva is just kind of going through a little bit. All right, so as Yvonne cleaves through and the creature lunges, there's this of the storage crate rapidly hopping and lunging at the creature's legs. And while the teeth have no better luck than a broadsword or a rifle bullet at cleaving through the armor, the acid does begin to melt away at its leg as the leg actually gives way completely and it stumbles. Uh, nigh, uh, late, uh, nigh, uh, late, uh, nigh, uh, late. And finally stumbles and falls over, its body sparking and twitching as its mechanical body finally gives out completely. Sweet little xenomorph, baby. <laughs> and, uh, speaking of aliens, um... Uh, yep. Israel, uh, um, as you're still uh, looking around, you still have no sign of your assailant as a second uh, gash appears across your chest this time for an additional 13 slashing. Um, uh, and you can hear this low animalistic um, uh, um, but, 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 but Israel, you are now up. So, do I have any sort of trajectory of where that came from? You could, you, uh, you, you've heard it, and it's cl it clearly within range of you. Uh, it's definitely right. It seems to be pr you estimate right in front of you, uh, given the. Well, I'm gonna reach out and cast a vampiric touch. All right, uh, this is a melee attack, correct? Yes. All right, since it is still invisible, you'll make this at disadvantage, but you can still try and hit it. Um, a one uh not or like just with yeah, modifier just a nat one <laughs> um uh Israel, as you lunge forward, you 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 can actually feel some slight movement and you feel something grab your arm and all of you in the chamber, it's like the chamber suddenly goes quiet as you hear a sickening crack as Israel, you can feel bipedal arms grab your arm and break it uh as you reach out. She shrieks. Like the like the devastated shriek of someone who's in terrible, awful, no good, very bad pain. Yeah. Um, she's not look good. She's extremely bloody, and she actually just collapses to a knee from that. <laughs> uh, and you can Cradling hear it. Her, her arm. And you can hear it again. That animalistic. <laughs> um, the growl of like an animal, practically. Um, He's going to misty step. <laughs> All right. And she will miss you set. Where's 30 feet? Uh, yeah, she's going to go 30 feet that way. All right. I Israel, as you feel your arm break uh, uh, and you're in awful pain, you're bleeding from massive wounds on your front, your arm is broken, you tune into your elvish instinct and... <laughs> vanish and uh, reappear several feet away. And Gaharis, you can see Israel's arm is limp and they're bleeding heavily uh, and just on the ground screaming in pain. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's the end of your turn, Israel? All right, Griaz, you're up. Okay, well, dang. All right. Um, I guess he could see Israel, but he can't really see what's coming after Israel, and there's still the big blob thing to deal with. So uh, he's just going to drop concentration on the wind wall, and then cast, uh, what is it? Flaming Sphere on the blob thing, the, the Leviathan. Alright. Um, so it's just it's just a five foot diameter sphere of fire, just kind of centered on it. Um, and it's a saving throw. A, yeah, dexterity saving throw. That's a 17. Was it at disadvantage because it's prone? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, um, does it get dis... Uh, like, yep. just legitimate well, it's question. It's technically it... also incapacitated. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It is uh, prone and incapacitated, so deck saves uh, are at... With disadvantage, that's a 17. Okay, it still succeeds. So it's going to be... Uh, damn it, Melvin, six. you should have used your port and... <laughs> God damn it, Melvin. Damn it, Melvin! Uh, actually, I will cast that at third level. Why not? So I will make it uh, 3d6 halved. Okay. Uh, so that is 9, 12, so 6 points of 
fire damage. Okay. Um. Do, do, do. I will say this. Hmm. It has to make a save now for the oh, yep. laughter. Watch, it, laughter. No, no, don't even roll. It rolls an eight. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it fails. Um, uh, and Griaz, as you drop your concentration on the wind wall and conjure this flaming spear, uh, you misjudge the distance very slightly and put it slightly above it, uh, not wanting to risk hitting one of your allies by mistake, especially with how wounded a lot of them are looking. But to your shock, uh, as the flaming spear comes down on it somewhat lightly, for any other creature, it would be a grazing wound, but this creature actually shrieks and screams in fright and pain. And you can see several of the worms actually uh, running away, like abandoning the central colony completely, as the fire appears to do a lot more than you expected it would. Takes off his Sigourney Weaver costume, puts on his Kurt Russell one. Let's deal with this thing. <laughs> if, if Geharis, I, I'm just, as your DM, I, the, d this isn't, this isn't a suggestion. This is an order. When you uh, kill the monster that's, uh, that broke Israel's arm, you have to say, get away from her, you bitch. <laughs> Ooh, in a French... Okay. Do we need to Twist to my chocolate? arm! <laughs> oh, the jokes. Yeah, these are the jokes. These are the jokes! That's my big break. Well, Israel's... But yeah, so, Griaz, I will say you now know the Devourer Leviathan has vulnerability to fire damage. What um, the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, is that the end of your turn, Grass? Uh, I believe it has to be. Yep. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Is it Laffy Taffy? Because <laughs> it rolls a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Just a 10 on whatever it was going to do next? Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, um, isn't it still in the hideous laughter, or did it get out I, of that? Well, I think it makes a save at the end of its turn or beginning of its turn. Yeah, which it fails. So yeah. Um, so uh, with uh, so either way, it's not doing anything this turn. Uh, failures all around. It's still <laughs> laughing, but like torn between shrieking and pain and fear of the fire and like its laughter at Melvin's anti joke. Um, uh, um, as you can see, more and more of the worm-like creatures are just abandoning the center uh, central mass completely and running off. Um, uh. And I will say, Utaka, before you take your turn, again, for uh, any NP NPC involvement, uh, Moscow finally jumps up and slaps on the uh, um, scanner, and the door slides open, and you all can see a hallway that leads into more of the mist that you've been seeing for the transition areas between Nightmare. Uh, as Moscow looks to you, Israel, like, looking like genuinely kind of panicked, not smiling for the first time since you've seen them. We have to go! Come on! Uh, and uh, Joshua, kind of turning to look, uh, considers for a moment and seeing uh, uh, the success of the Flaming Sphere against the creature. Also, uh, Griaz, does it take any penalty for starting its turn in the Flaming Sphere? It's going to take that damage again unless it moves out of that. All right, which it can't because it's hideous laughter. So uh, okay. so it has to make another dex. I believe it's another dex save or it might have taken on Mac. Uh, which it fails. So, okay. um, uh all right, so it takes that fire damage again. Uh, um, yeah, so that's going to be um, 11, 15 uh, fire damage. Yeah. Uh, is that with or without the vulnerability doubling? It would be 30 then. Okay. So with it doubled. All right. Uh, as your fling spear continues to roast it as it laughs on the ground, it's looking bad. Like, more and more worms are abandoning the colony, and it can barely stand, uh, even if it could without the spell. <laughs> um and um, seeing that that creature is well handled, um, Joshua is going to. Hmm. Just seeing what he, uh, um, what he's, what he, what he's thinking here, because Israel's not looking good, and there's still an unaccounted for monster in the room. Uh. Joshua uh, pulls an arrow from his quiver and as he pulls it back begins to similar, somewhat similar to you Israel starts muttering arcane words as he looses it not seemingly at any particular target but the arrow embeds in the ground 
near where you were standing before erupting into flames. Um, as he's going to cast Create Bonfire at the ground where he estimates the invisible creature to be. Um, uh, and... Uh, da, 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 um, Uh, it does succeed its save, which, let me see if that still does damage. Uh, um, yeah, it doesn't take damage when it succeeds, but I will say that um, uh, as the gr uh, ground around Joshua's arrow erupts in flames, you all can see something of a shape taking form in the flames. Uh, you see this... It looks like it would be a lot taller, but its figure is somewhat hunched. Whether that's from the fire or otherwise, you can't tell. This lizard-like form. Uh, um, like a uh, lizard-like humanoid, somewhat akin to the Saurians and lizard folk you're familiar with in the waking world. Um, uh, massive clawed hands and feet and covered in shimmering uh, fur um, that uh, kind of are like flickering slightly, almost somewhat akin to how um, Francine's scales do. Um, as uh, you still can't see it, see it, but you can see sort of its vague shape taking form in the smoke and uh, fire of the uh, um, of the bonfire Joshua has created, as uh, you now at least have a rough guesstimate of where it is. This reptilian humanoid creature uh, that seems to be about human height, but hunched slightly, so if it stood up completely, you imagine it'd be a lot taller. Um, Utaka, you're up. Uh, Avron on deck. And I will go ahead and reveal where the creature is for the moment. All right. Uh, Barry, who could see it anyway, because he's a good boy with 60 feet of blind sight, uh, likes Israel enough that I think when she starts screeching in pain, uh, Barry uh, trills angrily <laughs> at uh, this unfortunate creature <laughs> and Barry will uh, charge towards it and try to latch onto it and keep it in place so it doesn't follow after Israel and hurt her more alright um, uh, go ahead and make those attack rolls as usual uh, um, if they hit give me damage uh, so that will be a there's dirty a to Barry in effect <laughs> uh, alright uh, that is a hit Okay, so that's a dirty 20, so that is 9 bludgeoning, and it is grappled. Okay. Uh, and then it will strike with the tail, the sting, which is a 18. Uh, that is also hit. Okay, that is 7 piercing, and... Numbers, numbers, uh, 10, 16, 20, 28 poison damage. Oh, wait, or, uh, DC 12 constitution saving throw. Uh, which it succeeds. Okay, so 14 poison okay. damage. All right, so you want, Barry gives a, and charges forward before grabbing onto the invisible creature, seeming to pay no mind to the bonfire beneath his feet, uh, and starts biting and stinging into it. And while you can hear this from the bite and sting, uh, Utaki, you can see as Barry stings into its side, it does clearly feel the wound, but does not seem to react to the poison at all. Okay. Uh... Utaka will... I don't know. I think he's a little lost what to do here. Um, the the black thing, it's still kind of like the, the Leviathan thing. It's prone still? Yeah, it's, it's prone and incapacitated uh, and still under the effect of hideous laughter. Okay, then he will come over here and... It, it's made up of worms, you yeah. said? Yeah. He kind of frowns at it, but he will still reach his hand towards it and inflict wounds. Uh, All right. I'm sure this will go well. Nothing could possibly go wrong. But it is incapacitated, so I get advantage. Indeed you do. Uh, Which is a nat 20. <sighs> yeah, that'll hit, funny enough. How does that um, work? <laughs> um, uh, 
So that is a level two inflict wounds. I'm just gonna do this and I'm not rolling eight D tens. Um twenty one doubled, so forty two necrotic. Uh, that kills it. Uh, how do you want to, um, dispatch the Devourer Leviathan? I would like that sort of, uh, necrotic energy that, uh, had recently formed other spells that kind of, like, builds up on his arm and kind of flows down, kind of, uh, glowing through his veins and leaves his hand, uh, into this creature and it kind of, one by one, like, they kind of, like, pop, almost like popcorns before, like, this mass kind of like like it's a very messy death as they rupture and all right and as one one by one the individual worms making up this colony begin to pop it begins to grunt and squeal uh before it finally bursts completely and any survivors quickly uh, scuttle to the edges of the uh uh chamber and vanish uh one alien remains in the room with you. Um, however, I think Ivron, seeing the state that Israel is in, will go over there and try and like catch her, uh, get get an arm under her arm, under her decent arm. Yeah, of course. Uh, as Let she me had help fallen, you. <laughs> as she had fallen half prone, and try and like help her to her feet, uh, and say something reassuring and he will pump the full uh 30 pool of lay on hands into her okay uh israel as ivron approaches you and slowly helps you up you're going to be okay uh and pumps healing into you your arm is still broken and hanging limp but the pain begins to subside as uh your wounds begin to close i got time to bleed <laughs> <laughs> she's like her good arm you know, latches onto his shoulder and she, you know, solidly plants her feet, the wounds on her side sealing up uh, as the magic just flows through. And she sort of takes a few breaths and like steadies herself and she like just locks eyes on the target that has now been revealed. All right. Uh, is that the end of Ivron's turn? Yeah, that's the end of his turn. All right, Gaharis, you're up. Melvin on deck. Great. Um, Naden being the good boy Naden is, is going to use all their movement to get to this creature. Pets unite! Pet, yeah. And make a attack on it uh, with trample if it hits. All right, make um, an attack roll. Because it moved more than 20 feet in a straight line, Yep. Uh, does a, well, I don't think a 10 is going to hit, unfortunately. Yeah, a 10 does not hit, I'm afraid. <laughs> um... So that's all Naden does. Naden, Naden tried. Uh, okay. Geharis, however, is going to go straight up to this thing in a rage. Uh, right, nat 20 on the first one. I'm, I'm not even going to bother rolling. You, well, yeah, yeah um, uh, you would have advantage anyway because you're flanking with Barry. I know. I just want to um, do a lot of damage. Yeah, that's valid. <laughs> um, and then for the second attack, that is a 18. That also hits. All right. So. And con saves uh, for both. Uh, nope, just the first attack, which is the crit, so it needs to make the constitution saving throw. It takes right. 12 slashing, multiplied, so 24 slashing. Okay. Uh, doo -doo. Then for the doo -doo. second attack, it takes 6 slashing. Okay. And then it's con save. Uh, it, uh, what's the, D uh, oh yeah, I have the DC on hand. It succeeds. Okay, so it takes 4 necrotic damage. Okay. Um, all right, all right, all right, noted. Um, uh, doot, okay. Um, that's, it. that's it for me, I think. I, I don't think I have any bonus, a I mean, I do, but I don't want to waste my last level two spell slot. <laughs> Saving that for the bad guys. All right. Yeah, that's it for me. Oh, right, actually, so with my last feat of movement, I'm going to move five feet to left i'm still within it's yeah, yeah you're still within melee so it doesn't attack but, yeah i'm just trying to close the distance so it can't get around me to get to israel okay fair point okay noted all right so uh geharis as you charge forward you slash and you see uh like very like 
disconcertingly like inhuman blood splatter as you slash again uh and at this point it's like uh taking a lot of hits so with a shimmer the uh invisibility drops completely uh you're looking at this uh somewhat uh like whitish red colored raptor like creature uh hunched uh but humanoid uh their arms like hulking and massive with very wicked looking claws um uh um and uh you can see their fingers do appear to be dexterous enough to hold things if they wished and unlike most creatures like this like some of the kind of like uh crocodiles and the like uh you recall their vision is binocular uh, able to see directly forward. Um, uh, and it's covered in these, like, now somewhat singed and damaged hairs that kind of shimmer different colors, which you presume to be the source of its invisibility. Um, uh, um, you estimate if this thing were to stop slouching and actually stand to its full height, it'd probably be somewhere in the ballpark of seven feet tall. Um, uh, and its eyes turn and lock onto you as it gives another... Um... And uh, from the sounds of it, that's the end of your turn. So, Melvin. Um, yep. I, I I don't know who you are, but I hate you. And Eldritch Blast for a he sixteen to hit. Oh oh, a sixteen plus four. That's a twenty dirty twenty to hit. And then hit. the second one is a nat twenty. Whoo! Look at Melvin. Look at that. That's the first nat twenty I got with these new dice. Hey hey hey. <sighs> All right, right. Melvin's going to do some damage. Maybe. I think it's 1d10 plus nothing. (laughs) That's something. uh, So he doesn't have a charisma score? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Uh, (laughs) I'm just going to post these because it's quicker. Uh, First one is 10 force damage. Second one is 4 force damage because it's 2 multiplied. All right. (sighs) Nice. Um, uh, All right. As Melvin lets loose, um, uh, slowly growing, growing more comfortable with the detestable spell as it comes to the aid of the party, two more bolts of arcane energy impact the creature now revealed to all of you as it <sighs> uh, leans back and uh, recoils from the blasts. Um, is that the end of Melvin's turn? Yeah, Melvin, I don't think has anything else. All right, top of the round. Israel, you're up. Grand. So, uh... Her arm's broken, so she can't do her usual method of channeling her Eldritch Blast, but she does not care. So she's just going to extend her good arm out and fire All right. at the creature. Alright, roll. That is a uh, 15 plus 8 is 23. That is it. <laughs> to one of them. Alright. And then the other one is a uh, 14. Does that hit? That actually does hit. Sweet. So we're going to do 1d10. All right, that is 11 force damage for the first and 12 force damage for the second. All right. Uh, As you probably for one of the first times you've ever done so with your arm hanging limp, the pain subsiding, but still there when, if you ever attempt to move it, you simply extend a hand and fire a blast of, of Eldritch energy. Uh, and as it swerves over and around the heads of your allies, it boom, boom, impacts into the creature again, uh, which leans back and uh, as it's slowly getting whittled down more and more by just the sheer onslaught of attacks as it's, unspoken alien allies are no longer there to distract and uh, diversify the attacks away from it. Um, is that the end of your turn, Israel? Uh, you muted, Corey. She's also going to use her movement to go towards where uh, our, our boy Misko, whatever the heck his name is. <laughs> Misky? <laughs> you know? Moscow? Yeah. Um, uh, Moscow gives you a smile as you pass and, uh, um, looks to everyone else as he keeps a hand ready on the, um, uh, on the, uh, keypad. Um, all right. Uh, Griaz, you're up and Utak on deck after the creature. Now we just need to find new names for it. Listen here, Mosh Pit. Come on, Mickey, you gotta hit that keypad. All right. Um, 
Grizz is going to stow the shotgun, seeing that everybody's kind of surrounded. His rogue tendencies are going to try to take over. He's going to draw his two short swords, and he's going to go in for a melee attack on this thing. All uh, right. Now that it's fully visible. Um, so he got a nat 20 on one of the attacks, 22 on the other. Both hit, and one of them's a crit. Roll for damage. Uh, he's going to do 25 points of slashing damage. Okay. And then as... I guess the, sorry, the extra attack is his bonus action. Shit, I didn't think that through. Okay, then yeah. He's going to maintain the flaming sphere just like off in the distance though. Okay. It's just still there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, was that the total slashing? Uh, or uh... The total slashing is 25. Okay, okay. Um, you approach and slash, slash into the creature. Um, but... It's you do manage to hit it and do do some damage, but your sword's kind of have trouble finding purchase against the like kind of slick and oddly textured fur of, and like tough hide. So you do still slash into it, but not ne for nearly as much as you had been hoping for. Um, uh, um, uh, all right. So, uh, um, and uh, as a rogue, would you get sneak attack for this since you have allies within range? Or uh... that was with sneak attack damage. The twenty five. Oh, okay. Was... Okay. Yeah, because otherwise it would have been just 2d6 it, that okay. was with everything else. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, the creature still stands, and if that's the end of your turn, Griaz, uh, it it's... What is it going to do? What is... What's, what's, what's it going to do? Um, it kind of looks down at Barry, who's, like, holding it in place, uh, and almost, like, scarily, effortlessly pries Barry's jaws open and throws Barry off of it before its claws unsheath and it goes to lunge. Uh, Is that it breaking hit. free of grapple? Uh, I had uh, not mentioned this at the time because it hadn't attempted to move yet. It can't be grappled. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Barry takes... Uh, not do it. Six slashing. Um, and Geharis... Uh, as uh, Barry like is like stepping back, like you know, startled at something as strong as it, and it slashes it across the face, like creating these like grazing scars across uh, the top of Barry's carapace. Um, uh, Geharis, its attacks are getting wild and frenzied. You get an attack of opportunity. It rolled an at one. Say one of its attacks. what? Uh, okay. Uh, well, that's a fifteen plus eight. That's a hit. Roll for damage. Uh, sweet. That is seven slashing. Okay. And a brand new constitution saving throw. Okay, just a hot sec. All right. Which it succeeds. That's fair. Uh, so it takes nine halved, which is... Wait, I don't think it's actually halved. I think it's just 2d8. One sec. Yep, I have the stat saved if you need. Oh gosh, why didn't I play a wizard? Do 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 48 if I fail. Do 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 if the spell ends. Oh yeah, it just takes 2d8 damage. Okay, so yeah, okay. it takes a total. Which was well. I picked up my dice, being the dummy I am. It was nine. It was nine. Nine damage. Right. Okay. What would um, I do without all of you? <laughs> okay. The creature is looking bad. Um, and that is the end of its turn. Uh, Utaka, you're up. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't think he wants to use any more spell slots in here uh but i guess holding his rapier he'll look down and be like what the heck and <laughs> go up and try and stab a thing why not it's been a while since he's actually stabbed something uh, all right and uh yeah if you stand there you will have uh advantage with barry uh backing you up so roll your tech with advantage okay i will do so <laughs> I feel a little dirty, but with advantage, I did roll another nat 20. That's fine. That's okay. Crit, ha crit happens. I want that on exactly. a t-shirt. Crit happens. Okay. 
This was your moment. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so that will be... Da, 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 da. 13... Uh, it's piercing, isn't it? Yeah, rapier is piercing. Okay. And... Uh... Oh, wait, no. No, I'm a rogue. This is never relevant. I want to point out. Uh, yeah. 19 piercing. <laughs> there you go. Utaka, how do you want to do this? Oh. Uh, uh, probably, like, kind of, because uh, Harris is unfortunately taller than him. It's a very annoying fact of life. Uh <laughs> But he will kind of, like, as Gaharis is, like, swinging at this thing, kind of duck under into the side of him and be like, sorry, big guy, and stab up through its uh, back, kind of, like, through uh, this thing's spinal column, I think. All right. Very nice. And is there, uh, and uh, Utaka, as you uh, kebab this creature through the spine uh, it freezes in place and like twitches and you can see its fur shimmer and like shield it from view once again before it like reappears almost like a reflexive action before it and goes limp Barry chomps at its dead body a few times Barry's mad <laughs> yeah I think I think a Harris is already moving over towards Israel All right. Uh, Ivron will assess if anyone else looks like they need healing. We've been raided <gasps> by Marifeather with a whole party of 11. Hey, thank hi, you. Man. Hi, hi. Hope Hello. Hope Fire Day went really well. Hope you saved or raised some money. Yeah, Amazing. I hope you didn't get scared by any ghosts. Exactly. I hope you did. Because we ain't afraid of no ghosts. No, we're just afraid of predators. <laughs> yeah. Aliens, predators, xenomorphs, Daleks, snakes. Animatronics, yep. mannequins. Yep. <laughs> there are totally many things scared to fear. Yourselves. Yeah. Krakens. We're, we're scared of everything at this point. Moscow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if anyone else looks like they really need healing, Ivron will use healing hands and give them six. Uh, Gaharis is fine. I don't think Gaharis got hit in that entire fight. You didn't. No. I'll, I'll freely say that creature was invisibly swinging at you for a while, Gaharis, and we just could not hit you. It's that 20 <laughs> AC. That 20 AC, I tell you. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, so uh, does anyone need extra healing from me, Vron, or no? I don't think so, other than if you wanted to give it to Israel again. Yeah, is there a mechanical way that we could help with the arm, uh, or...? A lesser restoration or a spell similar will restore the arm, and uh, um, it will recover on its own uh, over a set period of time, but... Uh, Okay. Um, you then, it, well, I you know, suppose... I heard that if you don't use your spell slots, you lose your spell slots. And considering I only have one spell slot left, I might as well use Lesser Restoration. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, so, Geharis runs over, like, mm -hmm. I imagine it's like running to home plate in a baseball game. He, like, slides in, in full <laughs> chainmail, and it's just like that grating sound of metal on metal. <laughs> <laughs> As like he comes to a stop, and he's like, um, "Are you all right? Uh, I saw that you got slashed. Uh, oh, that does not look good. Look good." Uh, and I, he will like raise a hand and gen like gingerly press it to the injured arm, and immediately this like glow of golden light just radiates radiates out from his palm. Yeah, so she's standing there stunned at this just sliding in motion. She's like, what is going on? What is this? But uh, as he notices that her arm is completely limp and like dangling from a socket and gently, ever so gently touches and the familiar warmth of his lesser restorations rushes through her. And there's the, just the visible slump of relief as she feels everything slotting back into place and she's mm -hmm. able to roll her arm freely. And she just moves forward and just, like, hugs him. Uh, I will wrap my arms around her, and I will, like, lift her up off the ground, and uh, I, I see that we have, once again, killed everything. Take that, riddles. 
that's the, that's the only real answer in this place. And she's like story giggling story. helplessly at that. Like she's just, it's the helpless laugh of like, I am exhausted. That was like another near death thing for me. And my arm was definitely broken and that was awful. Like that kind of tired sort of laughter as she lets uh, him spin her around. Then she just like pats him like to get down and it's like, we need to go. <laughs> Like, that's great, but we need Utaka to... glances from this scene to Gria's, like... Yeah, I, I don't know. You... It... Look, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, look, we should, still, like, go? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I need to collect my, my personal little monstrosity. Um, he's gonna go over to Junior, who's still kind of, like, just trying to gnaw on this mechanical spider, mm -hmm. evidently. I, I will hey, say, but uh, as a side note, as you approach Junior, you can see that while again Junior's bites are not having any better effect, its acid is slowly eating away through the creature's armor, and you can see it's actually kind of digging in the chassis and gnawing on what appears to be a much smaller, like squishy version of the mech inside, purely organic instead of metal. Um, oh, hey, you found some food. Nice, food. nice, yeah, <laughs> gooey center, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, if you're still hungry, there's some weird kind of no longer invisible lizard individual over there, but hey, but I just want to check real quick. Can you turn into this um, kind of mechanical spider looking individual? Can you turn into this? Because make you a little more mobile, I think. I know it's a little complicated, is why I'm asking. I, I, you know, you, you do what you can, but Junior kind of like shifts a little bit and starts like it turns the appropriate color and at least something vaguely resembling the texture and starts to kind of slowly like morph itself. It's a bit vague. The claws are a little too much like a real crab instead of the mechanical pincers. There's uh, uh, only four legs instead of eight, but it is slowly piecing itself together uh, to be something resembling uh, the mech. Um, That's pretty good. I I'm proud of you. We're going to work on it, but I now you can kind of walk around. And you look like something. Walk around. Look like something. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, hey, uh, I still got a flaming spear over there if you want me to cook anything in the room. Uh, we'll have a little barbecue real quick. But otherwise, we could get moving. So you, you want to you wanna walk with me or you can walk on your own? Uh, you see them kind of turn the mechanical head of the creature towards, uh, towards the uh, uh, dying uh, lizard creature and uh, uh, kind of looks back to you and looks to the lizard creature before slowly <laughs> making its way over to it and <laughs> uh, digging into the flesh of the reptilian. It's unsettling that you said dying, not dead, but... Yeah, that the, is very it's, unsettling. It's a nightmare for this thing. <laughs> Uh, if it does it look like we would be in here for several minutes while things are being devoured and people are twirling and such? Uh, Junior eats relatively fast, but yeah, you estimate if uh, Griaz lets them finish eating, then yeah, they'll, you'll, it'll probably at least be a okay. couple minutes. Uh, I think if Ivron would estimate that we're gathering our breath here for a few minutes, then he will do his uh, inspiring speech All in right. preparation of this place that we're going in. I'm not going to make up his speech for him. That, that, that's you can't fine. make me. Once, that, that's in, valid. once in a great time, it calls for heroes. And who are we? <laughs> well, we're not heroes exactly, but we try our damnedest. No, you're, you're miss space, the final frontier. <laughs> These are the voyages. A <laughs> long time ago in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> It's a never-ending quest to explore strange new realms, to seek out new life and it's new just, civilizations, yeah. to boldly murder. S somehow no Palpatine has before. returned. Okay, do none dee, of this sounds do, like do, do, no, uh, I, I'll say probably something. Uh, you all did rather well. I know we have taken some, and he kind of looks to you, Israel, uh, taken some hits, but these creatures are and were totally alien to us, and we stood our ground and fought our way through. And I think that's rather admirable of us. We can handle whatever uh, the man we're facing has to throw at us. Never give up. Never surrender. 
Yeah, that, that is... hammer by the sons of Warven, you shall be avenged. How deep do you want to go into sci-fi? Uh, in, in the forty uh, in the forty-first millennium, there is only war. <laughs> so he will give every party member eleven temp HP. Nice. I've seen things you Thank people God. wouldn't believe. Blood the tech the ships blood on God. fire off the hold over Ryan. I watch sea beams <laughs> glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All these moments will be lost in time like tears in the rain. For the Emperor. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I knew more sci-fi to keep this bit going. Um, and also, as just kind of like a mechanical thing for future reference. So yeah, like minor and big air quotes injuries uh, can be resolved with things like lesser restoration. But if someone loses a, like, loses a limb completely, that's going to take restoration to fix. Yeah, or like... Um, or regenerate. Um, uh, so yeah, ju just as a side note, basically debilitating effects like that can't always be solved with less restoration. It's just minor things like sicknesses or broken arms can be fixed. Um, uh, but yeah, Israel, at this point, your arm is still pretty sore, but uh, working without being in agony. Um, it probably feels a lot like how my arm felt after I got the vaccine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I just wanted that noted so that if one of you loses a hand in a future fight, is like, I can't fix it with lesser restoration, why not? Um, <laughs> um, all right, so, um, as Ivron encourages you all and you feel a bit more bolstered and Junior finishes eating, getting about from the creature's head down to the, uh, chest, uh, before approaching you, Riaz, and kind of kneeling down, uh, uh, in its mechanical form, uh, as it kind of looks up at you. You full, buddy? Full. All right. Well, you you come on back. You, I'm gonna carry you from here on out. I know you got full belly, and I want you getting sick. The that kind of molds down back into its typical shield form and scuttles uh, up your leg to take its usual place on your arm. Just going um, to pat the back of the shield, just burp him. <laughs> <laughs> um, a just a bone. Yeah, yeah, a, a little, a little bit of the fur from the raptor. Israel um, looks uh, distinctly satisfied, knowing that there's no possible way that thing could be alive after having its entire top half eaten. Um, do you uh, want to ride Nathan? No, but we should be aware that there might be more of those. We should probably pick a Thor and get going. This one looks good. I looked at the opposite door. Uh, Immediately. Do you want to open it? Um. All right. Uh, Geharis, you approach the door directly across from the way your group had been going and tap the pad. You can see it again. That green light scans your hand before it slides open, and you see another veil of mist. Uh, I have found a veil of mist that said we can pass through. Um. I don't see any reason not. I'm gonna climb up on Nathan as I'm saying this. Oh. Um, who would like to go in first? Avron? Me? Uh, no, like, Israel's already walking through it. She's <laughs> done with this room. Like, Alright. Israel, uh, taking the lead. Uh, one by one. Uh, does anyone want to stay in here for any particular reason, or are you all good to head through the veil? Utaka will not lag behind. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Okay. Yeah. We're all going to uh, stay with the group. <laughs> yep. Alright. Moscow we'll and tie Joshua. A rope to Otaka. <laughs> Buddy uh, system. Uh, Moscow and Joshua uh, keep pace with the group. Uh, as one by one, with your various pets and mounts in tow, you head through the Veil of Mist. Once again, the space widens into flat, silent nothingness. But rather than the veil of mist you're used to, it again has that sulfury, yellowish orange color to it. Um, uh, and uh, you all hear the voice of the summoner, presumably, uh, speak up again. You can't just trounce through your nightmares like you know where you're going. This is my world. Shut up, Jerry. Jerry, there is no reason for you to be doing this. You already know you are about to lose. Uh, you might as well give up. Uh, you hear a, a, a very slight... <laughs> you really think I can be beaten that easily? You yes. haven't seen even a fraction of this place's nightmares. And I'm not nearly... And as he's speaking, you notice the uh, yellowish-black fog starts to turn a pitch, uh, like shadowy black color, and his voice cuts. 
Suck it, Jerry? Honestly, she starts going, thank Nightmare. <laughs> She's pretty much assured that that's who did that. And was like, thanks, bro. Yeah. For shutting that down. Uh, is, is there, there like, like another path? That we can just... Is there like a curtain nearby we can just rip open and see like Jerry behind there? <laughs> the Wizard of Oz! Making your way through the uh, Misty Veil. Uh, now this shadowy black color uh, instead of uh, Jerry's sulfurish yellow and the uh, neutrality of the white and bluish, bluish fog. As the terrain begins to widen you notice the ground beneath your feet begins to get firmer. Not like metal or stone. Geharis, as someone who traveled through it the most, this reminds you of the salt flats. Um, and as the mist parts, you find yourself on the outskirts of nightmarish Veilbright. <sighs> Looking uh, ahead of you, you see that, uh, Utaka, you recognize this as that stretch of flat land where the summoner had been. In the center, uh, a bit of a distance ahead of all of you, you see a massive circular portal. Um, in it, you see an aerial view of the residential area of Vale Bright in the, uh, in the waking world. Um, nobody in this portaled Vale Bright seems to be reacting. Uh, but um, you can see hunched over it is a incredibly unhealthily skinny, almost skeletal uh, humanoid figure, which Utaka, you recognize. They have the Children of Red Sight medallion around their neck, and their whole face is covered by a blood red hood. Um, and as the mist uh, fades away, um, Geharis, looking to the left, you see the... Uh, the forest that would be the uh, fleeting forest in the waking world uh, with a whole herd of nightmares gathered at the edge of it just watching way off in the distance uh, across where the salt flats would start to end you can see where uh, there would ordinarily be coastline is just that wall of static that uh, Utaka had seen in their scouting with uh, um uh, mange wolves gathering at its cusp. Um, but Utaka, as you kind of turn to check the wall for that mountain of the wolves, you see that the mountain has begun to level out and instead uh, they're gathered at the edge of the trench that surrounds Vale Bright, just watching, drooling their staticky uh, saliva and like flickering and teleporting as they watch you. As the black mist veil lifts over all of you completely, you see that you're surrounded on all sides by monsters. You see, uh, Israel, you can see a towering scarecrow with a jack-o'-lantern head that glows. Um, Geharis, you can see another one of that like worm colony-like creature that gives you a friendly wave and a smile. Um, uh, Griaz, uh, you can see several zombies just swaying and watching. Uh, and Utaka, you see, like, looming over all of this is a massive pitch black dragon. Um, however, while the monsters do watch you, they don't react in any significant way. Um, and as the hooded humanoid figure looks up, you can see they're clutching in their hand a wooden uh, sickle attached to their waist by a wrapped chain. Um, and as they look up at you, the man is a dead ringer for your ally. Uh, the hair is much more visibly graying and their face is wrinkled, but they are a dead ringer for Joshua Scott. Albeit, ironically, albeit, while they're skinnier than him, they are a bit healthier looking as they have not had the experiences of their of their son. Um, and as the man looks at you, and, it kind of gives a... Hmm? And I think that last week we said that Josh was going to take the lead because it's his dad, right? Mm-hmm. We were yeah. gonna let him get a chance yeah, to, yeah. to make, get some words in. Yeah, yeah. yeah appeal, appeal to his better nature. Yeah, or at um, least distract him so we can show him in the kidney while he's reuniting. I mm. will, as Joshua uh, takes sight of his father, kind of slap a, a hand on his shoulder and be like, "You got this?" Question mark. And I will give him guidance. <laughs> he gives you a, a like gapped toothed smile and worth a shot. 
and gives you a nod and pats your hand on his shoulder gratefully before stepping forward. I'll go ahead and uh, move all of you to the appropriate map so you have a, some, something of a visual. Um, Do you want me to clear the initiative order? Uh, yeah. Um, Joshua um, steps forward and uh, as he does so, um, Israel, uh, you feel a slight pulling at your waist from Moscow. Uh, who points to the summoner as Joshua steps forward and slings his bow over his shoulder. That's one of my masks! One of your what? Uh, he points to the summoner. You can see, like, the hood that uh, is encompassing their head. Um, uh, one of my masks! Then get it off him, and she's going <laughs> to uh, load her rifle and go, Joshua, that's not your father. Uh, he kind of, uh, Joshua suddenly like stops and kind of like looks at you like in genuine like concern and slight panic. Um, but uh, the uh, summoner gives a wide smile and just like, rest assured, I am every bit the man you think I am and so much more. Jerry? Tell it to the worms <laughs> and she's going to open fire all right so you're gonna open fire on the uh on the uh worm colony no on him i said tell it to the worms oh okay okay uh, i'm gonna shoot directly for his face we're... okay no no uh yeah, I don't know why we ever expected that we were going to have a dialogue with any villains, because every other villain, we've all, always, like, beaten them down into submission immediately. Yeah. No villain monologues. Yeah. <laughs> instantly. <laughs> all of their tragic backstory happens when they're, like, in handcuffs and in jail. <laughs> we're like, why'd yeah. you do it? <laughs> ah, so you finally, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Israel, go ahead and make a, make an attack roll. Now, he is kneeling, so he's technically prone, so you're going to have disadvantage on this. So, wait, I do or I don't? No, you you have disadvantage because he's technically prone right now. Um, oh. While you're, while you're prone, uh, melee attacks have advantage on you, but ranged attacks have disadvantage, so. Okay. Well, I don't think that, that attack is going to hit, because that's a, um, an 8. All right. Um... As you uh, um, level your rifle and fire, uh, he actually reacts relatively quickly and just kneels uh, to the right as it whizzes past him and makes to stand up uh, and slings the chain sickle over his shoulder and gives you all a smile uh, and just like, as I said, I've mastered this realm and there's one fear you haven't seen yet. And as he pulls on the chain, you watch as he starts to get larger in size. Uh, uh, and as he gives a wide uh, smile, Phobophobia, the fear of fear itself. And I would like all of you to please roll for initiative. I thought it was a fear of growth spurts. <laughs> 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 uh whoever can add Ivron, he got a 22. Oh, uh yeah, let me do that for Ivron. You and myself. That was 22 for Ivron. That is 22 for Ivron. Wonderful. And let me roll for Gaharis. And I'd love that. We also just see like FDR in the corner, just like shaking. <laughs> right? 17 and then. What I I'll warn you about. Okay, so 17. There's no right being that funny. And then Melvin. So was him growing casting a spell technically? No. Okay. I don't... Oh, oh. Or he just a nightmare man. <laughs> yes. 
He's I, scary, I, man. <laughs> he's so scary. scary. <laughs> he was so very scary, man. Oh my God, he's please. so scary. Oh, no. Oh, he's oh, scary, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's such a scary man. <laughs> We've dealt with gnomes oh scarier than, than this guy. <laughs> Clearly, they never had to engage with Papillon during dinner time. We've been in the night room now for like too long. We're we're just broken from it. Like, oh, scary, scary! Oh. <laughs> There's no, oh no, so scary. There, there was nothing you could do to hurt me. We literally, literally murdered ourselves just a little bit ago. Yeah. <laughs> Why, <hey>, space aliens? <laughs> This is the worst. <laughs> this is cursed. <laughs> Alright, uh, has everyone added their initiative? I think so. Okay, uh, go ahead and sort it, uh, Garris. However, one additional detail uh, before people start taking their turns. Joshua turns on us. <laughs> Am I correct? Is that it? Uh, <laughs> Moscow turn on us. Joshua, both, yeah. Joshua Sr., clenches uh, his fist around the chained sickle he now wields, this massive towering uh, figure. Um, uh, and all of you, even you, Gaharis, <sighs> this uh, stretch of black smoke exits all of your mouths. Uh, and you watch as it begins to pool uh, it, uh, in front of the uh, portal to Veilbright. Um, and you see figures begin to take form. You see uh, the uh, greasy red head and colorful top hat of Louis Tenniel, uh, who gives a wicked smile and, and pulls a knife uh, from his belt. Uh, you see the monstrous insectoid cannibalistic form of Dr. Regina. Um, uh, you see the shimmering reptilian form uh, of Francine shimmer into view. Uh, and finally, with a strum on the fiddle, you see the blonde-headed bard. Uh, um, uh, what, what's his name? <laughs> Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and as all of these... Uh, um, figures take shape. Fear itself, phobophobia, um, uh, winds the chain sickle back around his skinny skeletal torso, and his, the hood darkens his face completely uh, as he gestures to the figures of all of your previous enemies uh, as he gives a now much deeper, like more echoey chuckle. I suppose it's only fair that we even the numbers on this battlefield. Face your fears. And it's a little earlier than we were intending, but I think that is where we're going to end tonight's session. Ooh. Ooh. Does, can you give us a, a scary monologue? Can, can you give us this monologue now that we're... Yeah. We're now I, now I want to hear it. I don't want to... Captive audience. Yeah, now you've got us. <laughs> well, like, you want to know his backstory? Yes. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> the audience demands that we hear this backstory. Okay, okay. Uh, Even though none of them said it, I'm just interpreting for them. <laughs> sure, okay. Um, as uh, uh, the uh, nightmarish version of Tenniel uh, uh, wipes a finger across his uh, lips and licks them, uh, and Francine vanishes from view once again. Regina claws into the salt flats uh, as her pitch black spider-like eyes look at you. Um, and the bard uh, plucks on his uh, instrument uh, um, and gives a few experimental strums before nodding um, as uh, Joshua Scott Sr. Uh, looks down at all of you. Um, and his son, now dwarfed metaphorically and literally by his father, uh, looks up at the nightmarish uh, uh, figment and... <sighs> Why? Our family has spent generations since your father fight, fighting the children of Red Side. Why join them? Uh, uh, Joshua Sr., their face still shrouded by the hood uh, with one hand on the chained sickle, um, looks around uh, at Nightmare. I wasn't the only one who had to face my fears, son. The children of Red Sight can't be stopped. But I see no reason that I can't hedge my bets for the winning side. 
you were afraid. Uh, you watch as the hulking figure looks down at his son and kind of hesitates for a moment. I was. Not anymore. I'm Fear's master now. Uh, and he slams the chain sickle onto the ground uh, um, as it has these like unnatural movements, almost like a prehensile limb, uh, uh, as it slinks back to wrap around him, looking like the chains of a prisoner. I was constrained by my fear once, but no longer. Once I'm the master of this realm and the nightmares have begun invading the waking world, only then, with the help of Nightmare, do we stand a chance against the children of Red Sight. Turn their resources against them. But to do that, I need to be Fear's master. And you're the only obstacles left. The monsters obey me now, as do the mages and as do the nightmares. Uh, and uh, Geharis, you can hear the tea kettle like whinnies of just this herd of nightmares like Naden. And even Naden kind of perks his head up and looks up at the hulking figure and kind of tilts their head in curiosity. This is my world. And soon, both will be. Uh, and they gesture to the portal uh, to Veilbright. As you can see, some of the monsters like kind of looking at it curiously. Uh, is this was your plan? Uh, who was the uh, inside person to trap us here? Uh, he kind of, uh, you can see the very slight ghost of a smirk uh, beneath the hood. I was trying to keep you out of the way. I can't afford you interrupting me now. Not when I'm so close to finishing my research. I, I lean over to Griaz. Griaz, you are you are better at the, the shit talking than I am. <laughs> oh yeah, um, man, fuck you. <laughs> Suppose that's fair. But I suppose since you made it here, Nightmare must be wrestling against my control. They'll understand in time. Do you hear yourself? Do you see yourself? Is there anything left that's even worthwhile about you in this husk that you've become? At this, they're actually silent. And you hear Joshua speak up in a somewhat small, quiet voice. How long have you been here? And the hulking figure pauses. I came to help with their research long ago. They didn't see what I saw. And you never left. But uh, perhaps because he's deranged, so her friends can hear it. He probably can't. <laughs> I was afraid, but I'm not anymore. Can I insight check that? Is this guy just trying to delude himself? Because I feel check. like a, a lust for power just equates to, I'm so scared. <laughs> Uh, that is a 19 plus 2, I think. Yeah, plus 2. 21. He does seem to believe it, but you can tell from their body language, even if you can't see the face, every time they mention the Children of Red Side, even though they wear the medallion proudly, um, every time they claim to have mastered their fears, they're terrified. And from what Joshua is saying and what the man is implying, you get the impression this is a man who came to Nightmare meaning to do good, saw his fears, and never recovered. Um, he and He absolutely, yeah. lost, absolutely. He lost it. He's head over tea kettle in the derangement. Yep. Um, so he seems to believe what he's saying, but you can also tell that like his instincts are fighting against it. And as it, you, you seem to feel that Israel may be correct, that seeing his fears and nightmare for even longer than his son and any of you had to uh, likely pushed him over the tipping point. And this is his attempt to regain some control over his emotions without having to grapple with his fears endlessly. I think that they are deranged. They... I, I lower my voice, firstly, so this, per... this... Jerry can't hear me. Bosco um, uh, nods up at the Tuvian. <laughs> they... 
are still scared. This is a trick of their mind after breaking that they don't have to face who they are in the mirror. You're muted, Matt. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, that's why I always keep Zoom open when I'm talking. Uh, Joshua begins to back up away from the portal towards all of you, passing by the uh, monstrous nightmare creatures. Uh, and once they're a bit still in front of all of you, but a bit uh, closer, turn and you can see they're not crying, but there is like a very slight mist to their face uh, as uh, they they say nothing, but they just give you all a very solemn. Israel gives him a very sympathetic look and would pat him on the shoulder. As he rejoins the fold of the group properly, uh, he gives a sigh. He looks to you, Geharis. You saw what I saw, didn't you? Yes, that I did. Then there's nothing left to it. And he reaches uh, towards his quiver. Um, All right, man. I might be your father, but he ain't your daddy. Uh, I believe that Jerry is in for the fright of their lives. <laughs> God damn it. I suppose they are. This is gonna fucking suck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, to re even re even those odds, and she sort of flexes a hand. Yeah, Utaka is looking at, uh, glancing to Taniel and uh, Ringo warily. Uh, and <laughs> and as the nightmares sharpen their weapons and you watch as Joshua Sr. takes a massive gigantic step over uh, the portal blocking entry uh, to it with their uh, with just their size and body as their foot lands where his son had been standing a moment before uh, as the chain sickle uh, like on its own accord begins to droop down towards his hand and he uh, grabs it uh, tightly uh, and gripping it in both hands uh... <sighs> I will not be afraid again. And that is where we will end it. Wonderful. I'm so excited to beat up someone's dad, I guess. <laughs> Deeply traumatized and <laughs> yeah. like... Poor Josh. Always locked in the worst places and now they also have to put up with their family. Yeah, and apparently it runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, uh, I'll go last. Who wants to tell all our wonderful fans where they can find you? Uh, I usually go towards the end, so I guess I'll go. Um, uh, um, I was Matt, your DM. I played everyone who wasn't the party who was fantastic, by the way. Um, uh, um, I got to play Joshua Scott. Joshua Scott, Nightmare. Um, <laughs> um uh, if you want to see more of my DMing chops, um, uh, check out my Tuesday game on the Odd Tornado Productions YouTube and Twitch channels every Tuesday uh, for my streamed game of Black Ink and Blue Blood, uh, a politically driven uh, campaign where all the parties, nobles and lords, uh, trying to unravel political conspiracy that is currently having them travel through the Underdark beneath Geharis and Yvron's homeland. So that's fun. Um, uh um, if you want to see more of my personal uh, writing work, check out my uh, webcomic Undercommon on Webtoon and Tapas, uh, featuring the first goblin to ever become an adventurer. Um, uh, and uh, um, I want to make absolutely sure I say this before I forget, the Devourer Leviathan, uh, both in voice, design, and personality, uh, was courtesy of Ever Starcatcher, uh, uh, an artist uh, who is incredibly talented. Uh, and uh, when I said I was looking uh, for a xenomorph, offered up uh, uh, their character Lumi for this purpose. Um, uh, so um, you can find them on Tumblr, on Twitter. Uh, their artwork is fantastic. Um, uh, so highly recommend it, and that was their vocal talents playing the Devourer Leviathan. Um, 
uh, other than that, if you want to see uh, their work, my work, uh, or uh, other people I have the fortune of working with, uh, check out Odd Tornado Productions Official on uh, Tumblr, uh, where it has links to uh, all of uh, our various things. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's about um, uh, that's about it for me. Okay, okay. Hi everybody, I'm Derek Sword. Uh, I have a number of projects. The best place to find all of them is on my Twitter at dsword16. Uh, a few of them include the following. Uh, tomorrow, I am actually going to be back here on Graham's channel at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern for a uh, game of Ryutama, which is going to be uh, DM'd, or GM'd rather, by Anik and Graham will be in as well. And Kari, actually. Um, so I'm not in it. Out. I'm not in it. <laughs> you're not in I'm it. I'm just oh, running tech. In the chat. Yeah. Okay. I'll be That's there right. watching okay. you all from behind the veil. Kari will be there. Yeah. Graham's always there somewhere. Um, but yeah, Game of Ryutama. Uh, if you're not familiar, it is uh, kind of a cute, almost like anime manga style, um, like traveling adventure where <laughs> death is also incredibly possible. Uh, so check that out tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, tomorrow evening, I'm going to be on Eva Sariot's channel where I'm DMing uh, Horizons Call, an oceanic campaign that will uh, is an ongoing 12-week campaign. Uh, we're going to be taking two weeks off after this week, so check out for kind of a, a cliffhanger. Uh, I'm also on this channel. Uh, every other Tuesday, we are skipping a week. Uh, this coming for Shards of Anarion, where I play a Null Ranger named Verban. And I am also the co-host of the podcast Monster Crush. So if you enjoy smooching monsters and think that all monsters deserve a little bit of love, check that out wherever podcasts are found. I think that's it for me. Uh, hi, guys. Sorry for people tuning in. Yes, we are ending early today as we are missing a player and some people have to wake up to early tomorrow. Uh, I am Pharaoh. Uh, I played Utaka today. Um, my current projects include this wonderful game that I exist only to uh, further. Uh, so you can find me here every Friday without fail. Um, you can also find me, I believe we will be playing this coming Tuesday. For the Shards of Anarion, uh, I will be playing a Sinra Stoudermane, a Leonin Warlock Paladin uh, of no renown. And uh, you can find me also on Twitter, uh, which we linked in the chat. And my other... I don't have any other streamed projects, but uh, my current life project, I will be adopting a puppy tomorrow. So that's going to be exciting. So in future streams, I might have to leave. Once an hour. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I will pass it off to Takari. Hey, everybody. It's me, Kari. I played Israel today. And uh, I am Graham Cracker's exclusive content, except for the game of Ryutama that I will be playing with Derek uh, as part of our fun indie April games. So look for me tomorrow, bright and early. If I look miserable, that's because I probably am on a, some small level because I don't I don't wake up before noon. Uh, spoiler alert, I am a night creature, uh, but I, I suffer for all of you. I do this for you. So I, I want you to appreciate that. Um, you'll also see me uh, not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after for that sweet, sweet uh, Anarian's Rest game that alternates uh, with Pharaoh's game there. So you can see me then, you can see me every Friday, and you'll see me sporadically uh, throughout the month of April for various indie games when I remember when they are, which is usually only a few days before they're going to happen. So look out.
There's no sound. Ha! I knew it. I knew turning it off and muting myself was the wrong idea, and I did it anyways. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Graham, or Graham Crackers. Thank you for joining my channel <laughs> and watching. Uh, it has been a delight. Uh, it has been a pleasure playing Geharis Nervos, uh, the tiefling paladin Oath of Conquest before you tonight. If you like more or want to see more, you can see me tomorrow on Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard on Polished Cryptids channel, where I play Maverin Minados, a tiefling sorcerer warlock pa uh, pirate who is just about to get into a big battle with other pirates. Uh, what mischief will I get into? Probably too much. If you like seeing more than that, on Tuesdays, I DM Shards of Anarian and Anarian's Rest, two 5e homebrew campaigns set in the world of Anarian, uh, in which I torture all the suckers who decide to play endlessly, and they have to deal with it. Uh, outside of that, you can find me Wednesday, where I will be finalizing the last episode of Uncaged Anthology on Open for Adventure, where Samander Tennant, the half-elf cleric that could, will have their final episode. Very tragic, very tragic. Uh, but that is where you can find me, or you can find me on Twitter, which is Graham Crackers with a Z1. Um, outside of that, I'm, I'm around. So you can hunt me down wherever, wherever you find me. Pick or choose. And we are going to call it for a tonight. I hope that we will see you soon. Tomorrow we will be playing Ryutama for our April Indie Month. We have several other games lined up, such as, you know, Sunken and Monster of the Week and... Mothership. Mothership. And, oh God, there's like you two more. We did Honey Heist. We did Honey Heist. There's like two or three more. Bluebeards. Blue. Uh, I think I, that got changed. Yeah, Queer Heist. Yes. Gosh, there's so the many. There's one. just so, so many games. So Come stay on. tuned. There's a handful. There, there's a handful. Uh, but I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and have a fantastic night. We will see you again soon. Bye. Bye.